Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. Uh, for the human growth hormone, uh, your job, your job is to um, make a plasmid that has heart, heart um, bacterial DNA, which is what plasmids are, and part human DNA and insert it to be inserted into a bacteria. And so, so what I just gave to you, you have two slips of paper, um, one that says human DNA. And so the human DNA, uh, this is just a small segment, let's say of a very long piece of DNA making up one of our chromosomes. And so the human growth hormone gene is a segment, a small part of the larger piece of DNA. And so, <coughs> So what you're going to do is you are going to uh, simulate what we're going to be doing in the lab next week. And so what we're going to be doing is taking a gene out of a jellyfish and, um, and trying to put it into bacteria. So this is a human gene putting it into to bacteria. And so yesterday in the video I talked about um, uh, practical applications that we've used to put genes into bacteria to cause bacteria to make proteins that they normally don't make but they're proteins that are helpful for us and so so the gene of interest in this uh, simulation is the human growth hormone gene out of the human DNA so what we have to do to get that gene into the bacteria is the bacteria naturally take in DNA and they take in DNA and they don't cut up their um, DNA of other bacteria. So when they take in foreign plasmids, if you put a plasmid outside of the bacteria, it'll take it in. And so what we want to do is cut the human gene out of the human DNA. So the first thing that you're going to be doing, uh, or one of the first things, is you have to um, figure out where the human gene is. This whole thing isn't the, the gene. No, this is just a piece of human DNA. The human growth hormone gene is just a smaller segment of that. So there's gonna be information in the packet as you go through that will help you to determine where the gene is. So once you determine where the gene is, we need to cut the gene out. So out of all the DNA, we want just the gene of interest. So you want to cut on both sides of the gene so that you cut the gene out of the human DNA. What cuts the gene out? Restriction enzymes. And restriction enzymes are naturally found in bacteria. But that's one of the bacteria's defenses, which is when we talked about bacteria and viruses, I kept saying that there are things about them that you need to know that we apply to this, and that's one of the things. So that people, we as humans, said, say, okay, we want to cut and put this gene into the bacteria. What do we have in nature that we know cuts DNA? Restriction enzymes and bacteria. So we, we take the restriction enzymes out of the bacteria, and there are all different kinds of restriction enzymes. And every restriction enzyme looks for a particular sequence of bases in the DNA. So it's G-A-A-T-T-C for this particular restriction enzyme. It's not the same for every single one. And so when that when it cuts, remember, it makes a jagged cut creating these things called sticky ends. And so what happens is if you take two pieces of DNA, like this piece of DNA and another piece of DNA and cut it with the same restriction enzymes, they make the same stick, uh, sticky ends, which then can bind together. And so what we want to do, is, and what you're going to be doing, is in this activity, you're going to be given um, uh, three different restriction enzymes, and with what's, what's the sequence that they look for and how they cut and make these jagged sticky ends. And you need to decide, um, looking at the human DNA and the bacterial DNA, which restriction enzyme will cut out the, the gene out of the human DNA. So um, if your gene is inside this piece of DNA, how many cuts do you want to, to make? Two, one on either side of the gene to cut it out, right? So therefore you'd be looking for um, the, the restriction enzyme that has a sequence, the cutting site, the, the sequence that would be on either side of the gene so you can make two cuts to cut that gene out. Whereas the bacterial DNA, the bacterial DNA, first of all, it's on this piece of paper. Is this the shape of a plasmid? No. No, what are plasmids shaped like? Plasmids are circles. And so therefore, when you 
if you leave it linear, it seems like there's a beginning and an end, and there's not a beginning and an end for the plasma DNA. So what I'm going to have you do is, if you watch this, you can just cut, um, fold it over like this, and then fold it over like this until your bases meet like this, and then you're going to use a piece of tape, and in just a minute you're going to come and get tape, and you can tape it together. And when you tape it together, you get a nice circular piece of DNA, so there's no beginning or no end, all right? That's different, we keep the human DNA linear because human DNA is linear, okay? And so there is a beginning and an end. So this is what the plasmid looks like. So then, we, once you figure out um, and, and can cut this gene out, when you're figuring out what restriction enzyme to use, you're gonna wanna use the same restriction enzyme on the plasmid because you'll want the plasmid to have the same sticky ends as your human DNA so that they'll bond together. Um, so if we have a circular plasmid, how many cuts would we want our enzyme to make in the plasmid? One or two? One or two. Since it's circular, we only need one. Think of it as a circle here. If it only makes one, it just opens it up right here, and in that space, you can insert your, your gene, okay? So what you, uh, you're gonna look for is a, a restriction enzyme that will cut this open once, the, cut the gene out, so therefore have two um, sides, uh, to cut on either side of it, and you're gonna make a recombinant plasmid, kind of like in, here. So a recombinant plasmid. And then there are some questions. So you're simulating what we would do in the, the lab to create this. And then realistically in the lab, then you take your bacteria and mix it with these plasmids and hope that some of the bacteria take in some of these plasmids. And if they take in the plasmid, then they'll be able to make the human growth hormone gene. All right. And so, so <clears throat> this is just a kind of a cut and I was gonna say paste, but it's tape activity, to give you a visual as far as what's going on in this lab that we're not, we can't see what's going on, all right? All right, so like I said, it's pretty, you can just read through it and follow the directions and do what it says. Don't skip parts, all right? And if you have any questions, I'll be here to answer questions as you go along. So you can work together um, uh, to do that. There's scissors, you're eventually gonna need scissors and tape. So you can come up and get those now so that you have them. I have plenty for, you know, um, everybody to have scissors and probably tape for one per table, okay? So yes, you're gonna have to answer all the questions embedded. So when you read through it, there'll be questions and I want you to answer those questions, okay? Okay. Yep, every single question answered, yep. So there's the five questions at the end of the human growth hormone, you need to answer those, um, and so on and so forth, all right?
Thank you. 